hey guys welcome back let's look into the reactions of alkenes so in the previous lecture i have in detail showed you how marconi curve and anti marconi curve addition occurs we'll use that concept over here in reactions of alkenes the first reaction you're going to see is something you already saw in our alkanes chapter synthesis of alkanes from alkenes and alkynes sabatier sandrans reaction that could be the reaction of alkene as well there it is synthesis of alkene here reaction of alkene depending on which side you are looking at if you looking at the right side that becomes synthesis of alkenes looking at left side it becomes reactions of alkenes this is how organic chemistry is going to be from now on initially it takes a lot of time to build reaction types and later it's going to be extremely easy so here if you see i have given you an alkene and the corresponding alkane is formed just for clarity sake i have shown you the energy profile of cis versus trans isomer it could be the same alkene geometrical isomers if you take the cis is less stable than trans we have seen this before as well if it is less stable meaning it is higher in energy so here if you were to see that's your cis compared to your trans okay this is the amount of energy the trans is more stable than cis okay right so trans is more stable so when they come become product butane trans having lower energy to start with will liberate less amount of energy compared to cis so the heat of hydrogenation of a cis compound is higher than a trans for the most part okay there may be rare exceptions for a different reason but for the most part particularly neat and je mains a cis is always going to have a higher heat of hydrogenation because lower stability the next reaction is what we saw in the last lecture so i kept it to a minimum here addition of hx hydrogen halides hcl hbr it follows marconi curve rule if you use peroxide hbr alone shows anti marconi curve addition as well okay. it goes through carbohydrate cation intermediate and uh, the step one is addition of h plus to the carbon that has more number of carbon we use the analogy rich get richer and you form a carbocation in step 1 which is the slowest rate determining step then this will get converted to more stable carbocation if possible in including hydride shift alkyl shift phenyl shift and recently we saw ring expansion and then once i form the most stable carbocation the nucleophile br minus attacks and you end up forming the corresponding alkyl halide if you look at it this is actually the reverse of the reaction we saw in synthesis of alkenes here an alkene gives you alkyl halide there an alkyl halide gave you an alkene so the reagent that we used to go from here to here is alcoholic base okay if you look at hx then looking at addition of concentrated cold concentrated h2so4 is also straight forward follows marconi curve rule here a and b is getting attached h and x minus here h and hso4 minus is attached so if you whatever you do for hx the same is going to be here here it has to be cold concentrated okay there is nothing much to this reaction much okay straight forward not a big of exceptions here going into the next one addition of halogens okay when you see halogens halogens are here i have chosen an example of br br that really doesn't matter xx it's a non polar bond because electronegativity of this halogen is same as electronegativity of this halogen so this is a non polar bond but when it gets near a double bond this is electron cloud this electron cloud polarizes this bond and the electron cloud polarizes this bond and this electron and this electron gets repelled so the electron goes more towards the other halogen becoming delta minus that's what you have seen here so i have polarized this bond okay once it has become polarized this pi electron is donated to br delta plus this is similar to getting attached to h plus 
Now this pi electron as a whole is getting attached to Br, not just one of the carbons. Both bromine and chlorine, for example, they are extremely big. So they can be bonded to both of the carbons. Okay, overlap. When I say bonded, the more correct way of saying it is overlap with the orbital of both the carbons, forming what is called a halonium ion, more specifically. A cyclic halonium ion in our case it is going to be cyclic bromonium ion okay the cyclic bromonium ion once it is formed can be attacked attacked by the br minus that we generated here but because bromine if it is chlorine chlorine ion will be there because bromine or chlorine is on this side this incoming nucleophile cannot come on this side it has to come from the other way okay because of steric reason so if there is cycle here the test to come on the other way so hence it is anti-addition but there is no carbocation formation so there is no rearrangement so there could be a re if it is possible there could be benzylic here tertiary here doesn't really matter this happens only at the position of c double bond c okay no rearrangement so it's extremely straightforward so whatever is being given doesn't really matter doesn't really matter you put one br here one br here that's your product and it has to be anti-addition and what all can we say is this is a halonium ion giving rise to anti-addition giving to a vicinal dihalide vicinal we have already seen neighboring vicinity neighboring we have seen this in formation of an alkene you can go back to this compound by using zinc Here there is two different compounds. These two are geometrical isomers. Okay. Butenoic acid. This is cis-butenoic acid. This is trans-butenoic acid. Enoic, en and oic. And it is a dicarboxylic. So it is but-2-en dicarboxylic acid. And this is going to be cis. This is trans-but-2-en dicarboxylic acid. When you look at Br addition, both of them are anti-addition. So you get corresponding mixtures. So you want to remember it. It's actually very simple. When you see this, cis anti-addition gives you lesmic mixture. Trans anti-addition gives you okay, meso compound. Right, this will be a meso compound. This can be rotated and it will give you the corresponding meso compound. Okay, so now the best way to remember it is this you guys can remember the abbreviation ATM anti addition to a trans compound will give you meso. So, if you can remember ATM, you can actually get everything else anti addition to a trans compound meso. So, I can do here anti addition. To a cis compound racemic mixture okay i can also say not this example so in general if there is some other addition anti-addition opposite syn addition trans compound racemic mixture opposite of that anti opposite syn addition okay syn addition trans racemic mixture syn addition cis meso okay I can get all this just by remembering this one alone. Okay, anti-addition trans meso means everything else is going to be complementary. Anti-trans meso, syn trans racemic mixture. Anti-trans meso, anti cis racemic mixture. Okay, this reaction is an important reaction. It's a test for unsaturation. So this can show whether a given compound has a double bond or a triple bond, alkene or alkyne. Okay. If a few drops of bromine water is added, okay, or Br2CCl4, okay, the Br2 is used up, meaning the color of bromine is gone. So you want to use few drops of bromine. The bromine has to be the limiting reagent. So you are not going to quantitatively know how much double bond qualitatively if a given compound has double or triple bond aromatic compound even though they have double bonds 
the aroma the double bonds in the ring that makes them aromatic will not answer for unsaturation okay because double bond cannot be added that way there okay next is reactions of alkenes addition of water this is actually extremely important just like your hx this is equally important many times it will come there are three ways that the reaction can happen first is a straightforward way addition of acidic aqueous solution okay h plus is being added so look at this way i have this h plus is going to be added obviously hydrogen gets attached to carbon with more number of hydrogens because i told you it is marconica addition so a carbocation is formed once a carbocation is formed this is second degree there is a hydrogen here if this can migrate i'll get a carbocation which is a third degree carbocation okay more stable and then it will attach to oh that's your product so this acid catalyzed hydration goes through addition of h plus formation of a carbocation slow step then rearrangement of a carbocation then addition of oh this is exactly similar to addition of hbr whatever you do it for hbr addition you do the same here first is addition of h plus formation of carbocation rearrangement of carbocation last step is addition of nucleophile or attack of nucleophile here exactly same the only difference between the two is the last step instead of br minus you are going to put oh minus instead of alkyl halide you will get alcohol so hence i did that lecture very very slowly explaining you how to do marconica product if you watched it this is very simple instead of x put oh okay this is straightforward the next one is i can do the addition of water through what is called an oxymercuration demercuration reaction mercuric acetate h2o and thf is tetrahydrofuran it's just a solvent okay this will give a compound in first step that's not an intermediate it's a compound which on reacting with nabh for reducing agent will give you the corresponding alcohol okay the mechanism is not in the scope of neat and je main so i'm not going to show you this just straight forward the product so what's the difference between the two okay marconica product here marconica product here but this is even easier just remember the reagent no rearrangement so if there is a compound given this is the compound marconica product means carbon with more number of carbon rich gets richer and this becomes oh you have a double bond okay one gets hydrogen one gets oh as simple as that you just have to know it's marconica means hydrogen and gets attached to carbon with more hydrogens extremely straightforward okay the last one is hydroboration oxidation hydroboration oxidation is anti marconica product okay here i got marconica product here i'll get anti marconica product but here i'm telling you anti marconica product but not anti marconica mechanism the mechanism is still the same okay it's still marconica mechanism the difference being all along when you add hx or hoh hydrogen is the positive species when it comes to bh3 hydrogen is the negative species boron is less than electron negative positive species because of that okay it still follows marconica mechanism you don't have to write the mechanism just know that it is going to give you anti marconica product okay so here you take the compound anti marconica product means hydrogen attaches to the carbon with least number of hydrogens right here and oh attaches to carbon with the most number just like our hbr peroxide you do hoh addition here now if you see the same compound can give you three different isomers depending on what method you follow right so again marconica marconica anti marconica rearrangement no rearrangement now this what we have in this slide is actually extremely simple addition of hox just like your hbr okay it's going to be the exact same only thing that you want to know is in hox this is going to be the negative counterpart this is going to be the positive counterpart okay so this is just like hx so x minus will get attached to the carbon with the most number of hydrogens 
OH will get attacked the carbon with least number of hydrogens. Okay, it will do the exact same thing. Go through Marconi cow product. Reactivity order is something that you want to remember. HOCl will react faster than HOBr than HOI. And what you form here is halo halogen halo hydrine. Hydrine means OH group. Halo hydrine. Here is an example. If you look here, HOCl, Cl gets attached to the carbon with least number of hydrogen. OH gets attached to the carbon with most number of hydrogens. Exact same here. Br gets attached to this carbon because it has most number of hydrogens. OH being the negative counterpart attaches to this carbon with less number of hydrogens. Okay. Now we can extrapolate HOX to anything AB addition, Markovnikov mechanism, meaning the one that is the negative will get attached to the carbon that is having the least number of hydrogens. It's an extra here, nitrosyl chloride. It's called Tilden's reagent as well, NOCl. Here, your Cl is the negative counterpart. NO is the positive counterpart. Here, Cl was the positive counterpart. OH is the negative. That's because you're looking O versus Cl. Here, we are looking at N versus Cl. Okay, So it's NO plus Cl minus. So if it is NO plus, it will go get attached to the carbon with the most number of hydrogens. So this side, okay, Cl gets attached to the carbon nucleophile to the least number of hydrogens. So NOCl addition is strictly not a neat syllabus, but it may come, JE mains has it. Extremely simple. Just if you understand your HX addition, okay, if you understand your HX addition, Okay, Marconi cow, then we saw H, HSO4, then we saw HOH, here we have HOX, except here X is the positive one. Now here we have NO plus Cl. Now one more we can do is HCN, H plus CN minus. H plus will get attacked, carbocation, rearrangement, CN minus will do. All these are exactly same, just the reagent keeps changing. Right. Reactions of alkenes, oxidation. There are a couple of types of oxidation. Okay. We'll see all of them. They're actually very simple. The first one is Bayes test. Cold dilute aqueous KMnO4. So you want really dilute KMnO4 and also it is cold. Okay. So that KMnO4 is a strong oxidizing agent. MN is in 7 plus oxidation number, highest oxidation number. So it wants to get reduced. So it's a very good oxidation, oxidizing agent. What it will do, if it's a dilute solution, it will not cleave the double bond. Instead, it will form a comp complex in between right here. So it comes and attaches on one side. Same side attaching meaning syn addition. Okay, It attaches and forms a five member ring and it cleaves completely right here and gives you OH, OH. Okay? So anytime you have a double bond, it becomes a diol. One carbon gets one OH, another carbon gets one OH. So it is always going to be a syndiol or cisdiol, both of them on the same side. Okay, so a syn addition will give you a syndiol or a cisdiol. This is a cis compound, by the way. Okay, both of them are both the alkyl groups are on the same side. Cis compound will give you cisdiol or syndiol. Here, this is also like your bromine. This is also a test for unsaturation. Decolorization of base reagent or cold dilute KMnO4 tells you that there is a double or triple bond. You will get exactly same result with osmium tetroxide. Everything that you have here will be the same. Osmium tetroxide is also similar to this one, O4, O4. So it gets attached in this way. You don't need to be able to draw all this. Just know that a double bond gives you cis. A double bond gives you cis diol. Okay. Now, if you look carefully, these compounds, this is a symmetrical alkene. Symmetrical alkene giving rise to a symmetrical compound. So, that is a meso compound. 
So these two additions, okay, essentially this is an addition reaction. A double bond goes and gets a saturated compound. So it's an addition reaction. These two oxidative addition reactions are going to give you cis diols. If we want to get trans diol, there are two different reactions. It may look complicated, but it's actually not that complicated. Very simple. I have a double bond in both cases. I can use per acid. Okay, per acid. So COOH is acid, carboxylic acid. But here, if you see, there is COOOH. So there's a peroxide bond. So if you do a peroxide, that's called a per acid. If you do a peroxide acid, that extra O gets attached to the double bond like right here. So that is called an epoxide. So it looks like a cyclic ether. Epoxide, okay, which on, okay, this should be plus. Sorry about the typo, this should be plus. Okay, plus H2O means the lone pair attacks on the one side, this opens up, becomes minus and gets the H. So HOH addition. So this will give you transdiol. Okay, anti-addition. Same can be accomplished with Ag2O. Okay, you form the epoxide just like here and the corresponding. You don't need to know the mechanism. All you have to know is if I have a alkene, cold dilute K1O4 or osmium tetroxide, cisdiol, per acid. Ag2 transdiol. This is pretty much all you have to know. Right, moving on. This is getting into mild oxidation. What if we do strong oxidation? The first reaction is very simple, just like our alkanes. If you use alkenes and uh, oxygen, it is basically combusted to give you corresponding carbon dioxide and water. Okay. This is pretty much a mole concept question. You can balance your oxygens according to the alkene. If you use, instead of cold dilute k 4 you use acidic k 4 or acidic k 2 co 2 7 Both of them are strong oxidizing agents. They will cleave this double bond completely. Okay. So basically, they will cleave the double bond. All you have to do is cleave this and put double bond O, double bond O. That's pretty much it. Okay. And then the corresponding compound that you get has to be stable in this one. We'll see an example here. Right. So that's what we have. So here I have again cyclohexene. I break it here. Here I am going to break it. Okay. These are the reactions that are going to happen. So these are the corresponding products. So now, if you write your first product, C double bond O, this will be CHO, CHO, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, no loss of carbon, but an aldehyde group will be oxidized by acidic k 4 to alcohol. Okay, same over here, if you see, one of them is oxidized to acid, I think I said alcohol here, acid, sorry. One of them is oxidized to acid here, and here it is a ketone. That is because here when you cleave, this carbon is attached to no hydrogen, so it is going to be a non-terminal one. So C double bond O, so that's a ketone. This is a aldehyde. So anytime you have a carbon with hydrogen, will give you an aldehyde which will further get oxidized to acid, whereas if the carbon on the double bond has both alkyl groups, it will give you the corresponding ketone. Okay. When you take here, for example, this carbon has no hydrogen, so it will get corresponding ketone right here, acetone. This is CH2. So if you have a way to do this, you get formaldehyde. Formaldehyde will get converted to formic acid, which is unstable in KM4, gives you CO2 and H2O. Here, symmetrical alkene gives you two molecules of acetic acid. This is important reaction because it tells you many things. For example, this reaction, if I do, the products can be, they can give you this. 
let's say compound Z on K104 gives you A, B, and C. Okay. B turns lime water milky at CO2. Okay. A gives you form test. Okay. So that tells you two different things. So lime water milky is CO2. This is form test that tells you how to build it. Okay. And A is being acetone, it can also give you aldol, it can undergo, it can also answer, uh, sorry, uh, fail, tolerance. So they can give you anything but about A, B, and C. This is how organic chemistry is going to build. A compound Z gives you A, B, and C. A gives you this, B gives you this, C gives you this. Guess the compound Z. But they are not going to give you no further detail they're going to give you options a b c and d so it'll be easy to do all right so now the la next important reaction is ozonolysis think of ozonolysis as between cold dilute k 4 and acidic k 4 acidic cleaves the double bond and makes it completely oxidized product cold dilute k 4 doesn't cleave the double bond Okay, this is somewhere in between it is going to cleave the double bond okay. this is going to behave exactly like k 4 cleave the double bond the only difference between them is remember we saw that the if the carbon has hydrogen the corresponding aldehyde you get becomes acid in ozonolysis it doesn't it just stops there so extremely simple it's even simpler than k 4 just break a double bond given double bond put double bond o and double bond o that's all here I have CH3, CO, CH3, acetone, CH3, COH, aldehyde. Okay, this is, in certain respect, it's actually very, very simple. It's an extremely important reaction, ozonolysis, because it tells you how to locate a double bond. Okay, we'll see example, how this is going to help us. There are two types of ozonolysis. When you do ozonolysis, the first step is addition of ozone. When you have, let's say, a double bond with ozone, one of the bond is broken. Sorry, one of this bond is broken. Okay, and form this, and the other bond is broken and form this. So maybe I'll draw it more clearly. If suppose this is the uh, alkene I have, you will end up forming something this, the carbon has four bonds, carbon has four bonds. This is called ozonoid. This is not an intermediate, this is a stable compound. So that's your first step. Okay. You don't have to draw this, at least know this, you form an ozonoid. Next step, you cleave these bonds. Okay. Now, why I'm actually trying to draw this is once you form an ozonoid, you can do two things. You can do reductive cleavage. The ozonoid can get reduced to give you these. Okay. I can get this, or I can use in the second step instead of zinc and water, sometimes given as zinc and acetic acid, I can use peroxide. If I use peroxide, it is oxidative cleavage. So if I use peroxide, this is similar to using ozonolysis, H2O2 is similar to using the previous slide, k 4 This hydrogen gets to become OH. So again, ozonolysis with zinc and H2O is simple. You break the double bond, put double bond O, double bond O on both sides. O3 and H2O, you break the double bond. Any carbon with H becomes COOH. Okay, just like here. Acidic K-MNO4, K2CH2O7. Now, how can this be used? Ozonolysis is only understood when you practice problems. So, let's look into this one. Predict the product of ozonolysis. So, I have butene, butene, and butte 2 in. So when I'm going to do this, so this will become C C C H O. This is C H2. So it will become 
CH2O, where here it, I will get CH3, CHO on both sides. Correct? Right. So now, what I have is, here I have a compound that can answer iodoform test. This will not answer iodoform test. So essentially, I can figure out whether it is 1-butene or 2-butene. So one butene when it cleaves, this is the product you get, whereas two butene gives you the same compound. So two set of isomers, one of them gives you two different compound, one of them gives you same compound. Okay. So that tells you which isomer is which. This compound, there are two different double bonds, so you can break it here and break it here. If you break it, this becomes a completely cleaved product. This was CH2 becomes CH2O right there, CH2O, and this breaks here. Okay. This becomes a double bond O. So, the best way to draw this is numbering. Forget IUPAC, you number it this way. You number it according to the double bond. Okay. You can put however you want. Let's say I make it simple. I make it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So, 1 is C double bond O, CH O is going to be. So, when you see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, if, if I do this, 1 becomes CH O, 4 becomes C double bond O, 4 becomes C double bond O, 6 becomes C double bond O, 6 becomes C double bond O, and then 7. Okay. So, it's easier. In this compound, if I do, this is going to break right here. Okay. But still, the compound is in a single piece. So this is going to become double bond over here, double bond over here. Okay. Now this gives you a valuable information. When you look at product of ozonolysis, if you get only one product, like in number two and number four, it means one out of two things. Either it is a symmetrical alkene, okay, or it is a cyclic compound. Correct. Not all cyclic will give you one fragment, even this one, but at least it gives me an idea that it could be a cyclic compound or a symmetrical alkene. How can I differentiate between the two? A symmetrical alkene will cleave. So the product will have less number of carbons, half the number of carbons, where here the number of carbon is the same. Okay. Let's see even tougher one. I can give you the product, ask you the reactant. Okay. Product of ozonolysis will tell you what is the compound. Hence, I can locate the double bond. This is not actually as hard as it seems. Remember ozonolysis, you break a double bond and give you double bond O and double bond O. So I can think of it this way. I can join two double bond O's and give you a double bond here. So if I have this, I'm going to draw it here this way. Correct, this compound drawn here. This becomes a double bond. Similarly, over here, I can draw it here, O, double bond, five-membered ring. So, this becomes a double bond. Okay. Similarly, here, this is only one compound. That means it's cyclic. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six-membered ring, I have a double bond. And one of them is attached to a methyl group. Now, let's see what we got. So this is straightforward, CH3, okay, CH2, CH3, CH2. So when you see here, this fragment right there, this fragment right there is going to be here. If I break it here, this fragment is formed and the other fragment is CH3, CH2, CHO, CH3, CH2, CH. Here two rings, you put one on top of each other you can get this corresponding compound and the last one is straightforward as this. Double bond. Let's see, this one joins with this one. Okay, I think this is drawn not right. This is supposed to be this compound. The metal has to be here, not here. Okay, this is how an ozonolysis is going to be. I can give you the reactant, ask you the product. I can give you the product, ask you the reactant. Or I can say that an unknown compound gives you 
product A and B, A answers some test, B answers some test, you can construct it back. It may look daunting task at this time. Believe me, this is one of the easiest ones and students get used to it so fast that looking at this, they can mentally create the corresponding compound. And nobody is asking you to draw this compound. Just choose among the four options. It will get a lot easier. Okay, the last one, strictly not a neat and JE syllabus, but it has come once in a while. It has stopped coming recent times. Okay, it's an extremely important reaction for an organic chemist. It helps you on getting a six-membered cyclic compound easily. It's basically a diels alder reaction, a chemical reaction between a conjugated diene. See this one, this is double bond, single bond, double bond. A conjugated diene and an alkene. Here I call it dienophile. File means somebody who loves. Dienophile means somebody who loves diene. This person loves diene, so dienophile. Basically, it gives you a six-member ring. Okay, One of the double bond is used in forming a bond right here. This double bond is used in forming a bond right here. Okay, And this double bond moves. It's an extremely important reaction. First did by Diels and Alder. And they so important that they got Nobel Prize for this one. Okay, Let's look at a couple of examples here. So I have a diene and a dienophile with different R groups. It could be cis or trans, doesn't really matter. Okay, the corresponding six member ring is formed. Cis means the final compound is cis. Trans means the final compound is trans. That's it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to worry about mechanism. It's a lot easier. A cis dienophile will give you the cis compound. A trans dienophile will give you the trans compound. And the dienophile doesn't have to be just a double bond or substituted it can be any type here for example we have a cyclic compound giving you a larger cyclic compound and i even put bromine on each side it doesn't really matter your focus is right here this is the diene doesn't matter what's attached this is the diene of oil doesn't matter what's attached okay right okay these are the reactions of an alkene Alkene has taken a lot of time for us, but it's an important precursor for many compounds. If you do alkenes very well, alkanes is very, very fast and your plus two organic chemistry is going to very, go very, very fast because you don't have a lot of these tricky reactions, only mostly straightforward reactions. The ones that uh, I have not put here, one of the reaction of alkene is polymerization. It, for example, ethylene can give you polyethylene, uh, polythene or uh, styrene can give you polystyrene. It's one of the reactions of alkene, but it's more relevant in polymers chapter. So I'm going to leave it over there. Okay. okay. Make sure that you practice this and also I'll send you a worksheet. Practice the worksheet. That's the only way to master. And trust me, alkenes are not that hard. It looks like a lot. Okay. Take it slow. Practice it over and over. So it becomes a habit. Organic chemistry cannot be memorized. It can only be okay, strengthened by practice and it has to become way of life. Okay. Thank you and good luck.